welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm super happy that you're here today. Today is a super exciting day and it is long overdue because I have finally finished my Studio Ghibli Island. I'm so excited to share this island with you guys. I feel like it's been probably three or four months in the works at this point, but I am a huge Studio Ghibli fan and I've always wanted to make a Studio Ghibli themed island. And honestly, I wasn't sure that I was ever gonna finish this one because I just cared about it so much and I wanted it to be perfect. And I think I'm finally to the point where it doesn't need to be perfect, I'm still ready to share it with you guys. So without further ado, this is the final island tour of my Studio Ghibli Island of Kohaku and we're just gonna hop right into it. All right friends, here we are at the entrance to the island. The island flag are these little forest spirits. I think they're so adorable. I love them so much. They are from the movie Princess Mononoke, which I highly recommend that you guys check out if you have not seen it before. Um, and then we'll just take a little look at the map here. Um, the dreamy dress is at the bottom of the screen if you guys are interested in following along or exploring at your own pace but I just have my resident rep here which is myself and the final villagers are Blanche, Shino, Hornsby who I just couldn't say goodbye to, Lopez, Pico, Chester, Coco, Kabuki, Genji, and of course Kiki because it wouldn't be a Ghibli Island without her. And yeah here is the map. I have a little rock garden, lots of water terraforming, and then the front of the island is a more structured, I kind of wanted it to be like abandoned city vibe so there's a a lot of dirt pathing there. When you enter here, we have Kabuki's house as the entrance. I did leave you guys a little ladder uh, because there are some spots that you are going to be able to hop up and get a better view. But here is Kabuki's home. He seems super happy here. Just wanted it to be very rustic and overgrown. We have some Azuma gazebos on the cliffside behind his house. Not a super overt Ghibli theme for the entrance. I just wanted it to be like a reclaimed neighborhood with these little pops of the suit sprites over here holding the star fragment but we are gonna come over here and this is in a little ode to the spirited away scene where they are first coming out of the tunnel and i kind of wanted it to be from the end of the movie so i went ahead and used this damaged car here this is kind of like the main focal point of the entrance it was the first build that i finished on the island i really love it i love the way that it turned out it's probably one of my favorite parts of the island you can continue through here um, into resident services. I love that we have KK, but I think I'm gonna actually wander this way um, and just kind of go counterclockwise, I guess, through the tour. So over here we have Blather's tent and there's a little path down here that you can follow down. I wanted this to be very whimsical and overgrown with the mushrooms. I wanted there to be a little pop of blue. And then we have this area here with the sleeping Totoro. I just wanted there to be a little area for him and I thought it looked so cute in this kind of more color little area. I just think he looks really cozy and sleepy over here by this mini pond. And then this kind of splits off in both directions, but they both lead to the beach so you can't go wrong. And down here we have the campsite. Beaches are not my forte, so I just went with a very simple little decoration here. We have some picnic stuff up on the cliff and the actual beach decoration is just more like rustic. I don't know. We have like a tiny little play set area here for kids to play on the beach. And I was just obsessed with putting these little suit sprites all over the island. So I just had them hold a shell on the beach. I don't know what this area is. I guess it's kind of like a little mini bathhouse because we have these cypress bathtubs. I just thought they looked kind of perfect on the beach. Um, it's not like the most amazing area ever, but just a little a little filler spot and as we go back up here we will hit the museum if I could actually walk without running into things. I wanted to leave Blathers in his tent just because I felt like it suited the vibes of the island so much more than the full-grown museum and I just love the look of his tent and yeah I just kind of surrounded this area with some gyroids. I love the raccoon figurine. I feel like it kind of brings in the Ghibli vibes and yeah it's just a cozy little area for Blathers. As we continue this way we have both Blanche's home and we have Kiki's house and but I will go ahead and link the speed build for Kiki's bakery interior in the cards up above if you guys wanted to check out what her house ended up looking like. Um, Phoebe's house is actually decorated as well and I gave her a little cafe because I thought a cafe and a bakery right next door was kind of 
a cute little idea so we actually will go inside and I can show you guys what Phoebe's house looks like and I just realized that I've actually been calling Blanche Phoebe for like a hot second I don't know why apparently she's just giving me Phoebe vibes today I apologize for that um, but here is her little bakery she's hard at work in here nothing too groundbreaking it's kind of like a bookstore slash bakery but I think it turned out so cute I love doing these tiny little interiors and she seems like such a happy gal in here so yeah that's her little cafe bakery and then I did include the little tokens here from the bathhouse and then we have of course Gigi to go along with Kiki's bakery because we simply had to have that and as we continue through here this is a little ode to the movie Princess Mononoke we have the clearing here with the forest spirits and the deer god um, and I think this area turned out super cute it's a very small little area so I did kind of struggle with um, I don't know just kind of making it work with the space that we had but I wanted to put horns to these uh, little house in the background here and he's so cute with his little workout I'm so glad that he ended up staying for the final version of the island. I did do some very simple decorations here on the beach for Hornsby's house. Um, he has his rustic uh, little yacht, a typing area here, and then some laundry slash fishing over here on the beach just to kind of fill in space. Um, and his house is actually decorated as well, but it's not anything super crazy. I just threw a tent in there. So if he happens to be in his home um, while you're visiting in a dream, definitely feel free to check that out. But his house is just a little ode to Princess Mononoke, and it is one of my favorite areas on the island. But we can actually kind of double back here through uh, the bakery cafe area and go to resident services and behind resident services is the bathhouse speed build so you can actually go all four directions here and we'll go ahead and go off to the left in just a second but we'll kind of wander back here there's a hidden little cliff spot if i can get out my ladder here do i not have a ladder oh my goodness i don't have a ladder okay pause all right so i have secured the ladder and there is a little spot up here that you can get a bigger view of the bathhouse and all of the water surrounding it it's probably not the best view ever but it's kind of interesting to be able to see all of the water terraforming so i just wanted to include that little viewing spot there and then as we enter up we have the bridge that the spirits cross in the movie spirited away and then we have the main bathhouse this build gave me so much trouble you guys it was seriously so difficult but i took a ton of inspiration from horrible gaming if you're not following her here on um youtube and also on instagram definitely go and check out her account because i definitely couldn't have pulled out this build um without the inspiration from her and i just love the way that it turned out i think it really kind of gives true bathhouse vibes so i'm very happy with it and then i just have the little tokens here i was so excited about finding that code you guys it's literally perfect and it is kind of a dead end there so you do have to kind of double back and go around here and then we have Shino and Chester's house. I did kind of mean to decorate the outside of Chester's home differently and I'm not gonna lie I totally forgot about it um, but Shino has this little mini greenhouse here and it's kind of just like a rustic neighborhood there's not really a super crazy theme Chester has some like kind of rustic woodworking items and then the pathing changes here and goes to a more natural setup and then this area is like somewhat of a transition into a more natural area and this is my resident reps house just have a little picnic area here nothing too crazy kind of like a mini farming theme here there are so many gorgeous farms in all of the spirited away movies and i just kind of wanted to take some inspiration from them here i tried to include the raccoon figurine to just kind of brings bring in that like whimsical sort of nature that the studio ghibli movies have the inside of my house is not decorated i'm sorry to disappoint there but there's nothing inside if you're visiting um, but if you continue down this little path we do have another build for spirited away i wanted to do the train station i had so much fun with this one and i love that it's in the back of the island it's kind of easy to miss so um, definitely definitely keep an eye out for that little path there and yeah here is the train station i really love the effect of the turned around little benches here with the azuma gazebos behind them and it's kind of like the more rustic or rusty items i just think it turned out super cute and i love this railroad code as well i just wanted to include this standee over here as well because there's the iconic 
scene from Spirited Away where his character is dancing on the water. So kind of wanted to include that as well. And you just kind of have to run back and double back here and we will just kind of continue along the tour. If you keep going here, it's going to take you to the rock garden. This was the last thing that I did in the tour. And no, there is not a fossil here in the dream address. It does kind of look bad um, with the one that's here now. I don't know why I decided to wait until the last minute to do the rock garden, but it did take me ages to get all of these rocks to spawn here. But I do love the effect of it. It kind of mirrors the entrance um, builds that we have on this island and I just love a rock garden so I'm glad that I stuck with that. You can actually walk through here um, and get to the other side. This is the Howl's Moving Castle build but from this perspective it doesn't really look like anything but if you keep continuing along the beach here I did do one more kind of spur of the moment build for uh, Spirited Away and it's just like the little scene with all of the pigs. Um, not like the most Spirited Away inspired builds ever but I did just want to like throw that in there it was definitely a last minute thing and I think it's kind of like a cute little ode and you can continue um, back down through this waterway here but I'm actually not going to do that I'm just gonna like run back and I will meet you guys kind of over by the entrance to the island all right so here we are at the entrance to the island we're gonna double over now and go to the left we have a very uh, overgrown filler area here. I was obsessed with using a ton of trees on this island to fill space. And then down here on this tiny little section of beach, I did a ode to the movie Ponyo. I love that movie. I think it's so whimsical and cute. And I found this adorable little uh, Ponyo code of her in the jar. And I just thought it was so perfect. So I had to do something here. And I thought this little section of beach was just absolutely perfect for it. So that's our little ode to the movie Ponyo and then as we continue we have Lopez's house and he just loves to sit by this little watering hole here it cracks me up to no end um, and then I would recommend that you guys go up the incline here so I took a ton of inspiration for Coco's house from my neighbor uh, Totoro I just love all the farms in that movie and I wanted to just kind of incorporate that uh, kind of feeling into this little build as much as I possibly could. Hopefully I achieved it a little bit. Um, and yeah, behind here is a big giant rice field. So that's kind of a continuation of the farming theme. We have a very small little sunken waterfall back here as well, even though you can't really see it. And then that leads us to this gigantic rice field, which if I'm being completely honest and totally blunt with you guys, is actually like one of my least favorite builds on the island. You kind of have to hop over in order to get like a proper view of it, which I don't love. Um, but it was my first time ever trying to make a rice field. So, you know, we're just gonna, we're just gonna deal with it. And that's kind of what we ended up with. I do love the actual like real crops that we have in the builds. I think the effect is really nice. Um, and yeah, that's just kind of, that's just kind of the vibe. That's what we ended up with. As we continue along the path here, we have one little small viewing area for you where you guys can see my resident rep's house. You kind of get a mini view of the rock garden. Oops, off to the side there. Um, yeah, I just wanted to include a couple more viewing areas on this island because I just love them. I feel like they're a little bit difficult to incorporate sometimes, but this was one of the last areas that I did on the island, and I feel like you can kind of tell that it's a little bit less finished and polished than some of the other areas. I was really, really excited to share this island with you and just kind of ready to move on to something else. This is where you can view the legitimate Howl's Moving Castle. This build gave me hot girl anxiety. I'm not going to lie. And in the very end, I kind of just have to say, you know what? I'm going to be done with it. I'm just going to say that it is what it is. And so this is what we ended up with. It's really something. It's really something. I don't know that I necessarily achieved the Howl's Moving Castle vibe, but I am proud of myself for trying. So <laughs> there is that. I'm interested to hear what you guys think about it. And of course, I love those custom design codes. I think they're so cute and they definitely tie the whole thing together. If we continue down here, we have another Howl's Moving Castle build. This is just a simple little hat shop. Um, of course, I had to use the Able Sisters for that. And then right here is Nook's Cranny. One had it in place like some items behind Nook's to kind of make it look more full. And then there's just a lot of like rustic 
sort of filler items around the area. Try to incorporate a ton of these little forest spirits and suit sprites throughout the island. And this leads us to our final little neighborhood with a wishing well in between. I did also want to customize these two homes, a little reading nook here, and I totally forgot about it. So I actually might go ahead and customize them and then re-upload the DA when you guys are watching this, but if I don't, I don't. And you know, I'm happy with it. They still give off a loosely Japanese vibe, so I think either way, either way it works. And I love the well in the center. It's kind of a nice little focal point to tie the whole area together. Um, and this is honestly the final stop in the tour. That is the whole entire island. The rest of the beach here is really just nothingness. I just went ahead and put some random rocks in places and it's not really worth checking out honestly because the rest is just complete and total filler. That is going to conclude this tour of Kohaku. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. I had so much fun decorating in this theme and I definitely think I will revisit some loose Studio Ghibli themes in future builds just because I've enjoyed it so so much. I really hope that you guys enjoy the final tour of this island and I'll definitely be working more on my Meadowcore island and also playing with some mods but definitely let me know if there's a theme that you guys are looking to see me try in the future because I am just really excited to try lots of new things right now and I'm feeling very motivated. So let me know in the comments below what you thought of the island and if there's something that you'd like to see from me next. Before we say goodbye, I do want to thank our channel members. Thank you so much for supporting my work here on this channel. We're also getting so close to 15k subscribers, so if you haven't subscribed yet, I would appreciate you would do that so, so much, and leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it as well. But thank you all so much for watching, and I will catch you very soon in the next one. Bye!